um I know young crap. Sheldon. No, I I I watched Big Bang Theory. Entire, Big Bang that's Theory. It, Big Bang Theory. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. A. I've seen that series like three times all the way through and I don't understand why I couldn't remember it. So and and what does it mean then? It's just like a, um, a zinger like gotcha. Oh, okay. It's something that Sheldon would say to people. So like if he got him on something, he'd and say he, bazinga. And he said that uh, in response to what I said Pretty about truck drivers, like, so he was agreeing oh, with me then. Whatever. Right? Uh, I don't know about that. Oh, he's, well. just, he's just saying that. Okay, well, kind of that, uh, in response. So, actually, I don't he's know. Just, he's just saying. Okay, I was just making sure the sound worked on the Facebook Live. We're good. So, let's get this started today, Zach. Now, I was thinking about what I wanted to discuss. It's a little bit of, there's a lot of things going on in the world. We've talked about a lot in the, in this past week. We've talked mm-hmm. about the school shooting, which they, it looks like they have a suspect in custody. It's a white male. Um, I haven't done a lot of reading. I've been reading about some other things, so I haven't done a lot of reading on that suspect. Now, from what I've seen, apparently he made some gun video, and the parents the day before were called into the school to have some meeting with the the school. So he like this was mm-hmm. not a spur of the moment um, deal. Like he didn't just decide to go and and do it this. It's premeditated. Yes. And it and it's sad. Now apparently I think there was some confrontation he had with maybe mm-hmm. teachers. Um mm. you know, I I don't know the the facts. I'm going to turn my mic up. I don't know the facts for sure. So I don't want to speculate. But Okay. It's sad. And did you see where there's a fourth victim that died now and uh one of the kids that were shot was a football player, I believe was being recruited to play at Toledo, which is who um, MTSU is playing in the bowl game. Really? Mm-hmm. Hmm. So, you know, sad. It's sad. The problem is, is we know this is going to be politicized. We know that it's going to become a gun conversation. I, I, if you, if you notice, I took my guns, I put them back up in the safe. So no no gun demonstrations today, unfortunately. Um, and then there's also this new Omicron variant. <laughs> but honestly, that stuff's kind of boring to me now because yeah. it's 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 just the same old thing. It 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 really well, is. You know we and have. You know, what's funny is that that. That variant is uh, in Australia. Is it so, already? Yeah, that's the whole Great. purpose behind it. That's basically where it started. No, it started in it South Africa. Did it? Yeah, that's where you're thinking. Oh, of. oh. yeah. No, I mean it's they've they've already said it's in. Uh, it could uh, be in Australia. Australia, and we have it in California. Apparently, we got the first case in California too. Now, uh, Mister A. I want to ask you something. Now, I've had a couple comments on my the YouTube channel about the videos. One lady said I cuss too much. <laughs> but that lady must have been my wife. Huh? No, 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 no. It was I know the name. She had her name. Just kidding. Uh, Just kidding. But now I told Zach when I started doing this, the purpose of me and the way I talk is just it's me. Right, like you can ask Zach. I talk the same outside of the podcast as I do in the podcast. Do I not? He does. It's it's a lot of it's easy for me to keep my thoughts when I talk like that, but I just think that it's unique to me. And I think what's the word I'm thinking? It's um, everyone uses unfiltered, like like Dan Bongino's show, which is a great show. Uh, Zach, do you know who Dan Bongino is? Do not. Dan Bongino, he's like a Fox News contributor, but he also runs his own podcast. He worked in the Secret Service, I believe. He was a cop um, before, but he's he's great. But And it's unfiltered because they speak their mind and their opinion, and, and they're harsh on things. But, but to me, unfiltered is you get the full person, right? You get how they would talk in a locker room setting with their buddies. You get how they would talk 
just in a relaxed setting. I don't think that necessarily opinions are what is filtered or not filtered, uh, censored nowadays, Zach. I think that it's the way that people voice their opinion that's censored along with certain opinions that are censored. You know, if you're like what we're going to talk about today, my opinion on it would probably end up being censored. Not that it's a bad opinion. It's just different from the, you know, from the, the people that control the platforms that are allowing me to voice it. Right. But people, I feel like they don't like to be insulted or offended. And they're, they're not offended by me saying I'm a conservative. They're offended by what a conservative perspective may, may, may be. Be it me saying, I don't understand you know, why we have 50 freaking genders and you're a he or a she. And then all of a sudden I offend someone that's a, that's a pan sexual or whatever. Okay. But I do want to make this clear that the reason I talk the way I talk is because it's just the way I talk. There's, there's literally like what you're getting on the show is me outside of this. When I sit in a setting and I don't cuss or I'm or I'm not as uh, opinionated, that's me changing my tone for the for the environment. But but this is my podcast and Zach's podcast. It's not Fox News's podcast or CNN's podcast. So you see where I'm getting at, Zach? It's a place well, I'm with you. Yeah, it's a place where I can control and and it's it's my it's it's our environment, and I hope that the people listening, it's it's their environment too. I want to make it okay that if someone wants to call in and talk with us, how we talk, that is fine. Voice your opinion, even if you don't agree with us. Voice your opinion, because I'm not gonna agree. Zach and I don't always agree on something, and I'm not gonna agree with everyone. And mo- a lot of people damn sure aren't gonna agree with me. But I don't want someone to ever feel censored on the show or on the Facebook page or on Twitter or whatever. I hate that. That's what I can't stand. As, as outrageous as I may think someone's opinion is, you have the right to voice it. And I respect the right. That's why, you know, Revolutionary Bro calls in. He's done it twice. And we've gone back and forth. And we disagree on a lot. But I respect him. And I hope he respects me. I think he does. Because it's a it's a free room here, and I and I wanted to say that because one thing I want to talk about today, Zach, is this critical race theory. All right, we we brought it up before, and so I think you you've heard of it now, right, Zach? Mm-hmm. Okay, I've so, heard of it. So critical race theory, for those of you that don't know, is it's a big topic now, and. The reason why it's a big topic is because the right, Republicans and all that, that's that's like a, a big thing on their platform saying, oh, we don't need it taught in schools. Now, I looked up today. It's not being – it's being taught in schools, which is terrible. It's not – I don't think it's as popular as what Republicans are making it out to be in schools. But the problem is it's not regulated, which means you can get a teacher anywhere, Zach, that can teach it. And that's where you run into problems because teaching critical race theory, in my opinion, is a terrible idea. And I just want to dive into what what critical race theory is. I was listening to a lesson that they were teaching to a high school and it, and it bothered me because they were wrong about certain things. And then I listened to a another, I think she was a, a lawyer or something because critical race theory started in a, a legal class in college. A theory is just like a theory. Like my theory could be, you know, Alex Jones has a lot of theories. He's a conspiracy theorist, you know, and he has some outrageous theories, but they're theories, which means it's not necessarily proven. It's just put together by all the information that someone has. It's like a rational thought, basically. And... 
to start us off, critical race theory derives from a Marx. It's it derives from Karl Marx's uh, Communist Manifesto. It's called from critical theory. And I took some notes. I'm going to pull them up here. But I was watching this video. I can't play it. It's from YouTube. I wish I could play it. But the teacher in the show, he argues that you can discriminate. Now, this is what critical race theory is. It's saying that you can discriminate across race, as in a white person can discriminate against a black person, and a black person can discriminate against a white person. His example was if you were going to apply for a job and you had a white employer, he could not hire a black person based off of their race and it would be discriminating against a black person, which is true. And if you had a black employer, they could do the same thing and, and not hire a white employee, which would be discriminatory against the white, the white person, which is true. But where he, where he lost me is he said, however, that's not racism. Racism can only be between, from a white person to a black person. He said reverse racism, which would be from black to white in their definition, does not exist because there's no power structure. Now, Revolutionary Bro argued this with me. My problem with this, and he, my first issue was he said ism, the ISM, suffix in racism means a system and a power structure but they're wrong that's not what the definition of an ism is as a, as a suffix i have the oxford and the webster definition of ism the, the suffix ism so ism so racism sexism plagiarism okay it's an act or practice it's a process of criticism so, you criticizing someone because they are black is racism. And you putting a superiority, like white power, and saying that white people are better than black people because they are white, that is racism. That works both ways. There's no power structure in that definition. There's no system in that definition. Plagiarism, right, has ISM. Plagiarism is not a system, it's an act. It's when you copy someone. I would argue that it's actually the revert ism is actually the reverse of what they're saying it is because if you're committing something like plagiarism, you're less powerful than the person that actually has the original content. So that's where my first problem is that they, they're wrong about where they're defining this. Now racism can get deep. And there can be systemic racism. No one is denying that. But where you're losing me is that it can only go one way. Because if you're going to argue that there's a power structure and that white people can only be racist and no one else can be racist against white people because of the power structure in the United States, well, what about when Barack Obama, a black man, was the most powerful man in the world as the United States president? Well, now you have the most powerful role in the whole world is run by a black person. Then why can there, why can't racism go both ways in that point? Now, the other thing is, where does it start? Where does that power structure start? If you are an employer. You have power over the people you're hiring or have employed. Correct? I mean, that's just how it is. Your boss has power over you, right, Zach? Right. So, if your boss was black or Asian or whatever, and they discriminated against you, why would that not be racist if they did it on the basis of your skin color? It would be. Because they are, by the definition that they're using in critical race theory they have power over you they are in a more powerful role than you and they are acting against you based on the color of your skin and and they're doing it i mean that that would be racist 
There's flaws in the argument. There's major flaws in the argument. It does go both ways. What if we were in Africa, which is predominantly black, and I'm a white man? Well, wouldn't their um, systems that are in place be set in a power structure, and I would, I could then be, they, they would be racist. So there's flaws. The other issue I have in this is that, and this is really the other reason why I would not want this taught, is I, I put a slide. And I'm going to get the image up here for people watching on Facebook. This is a slide from the basics of critical race theory. And what it says, Zach, I know you can't see it, is it says postmodern, post-structural theories. Identity, so it's bullet points. Identity is a social construct. We always hear that social construct word now. Okay. Then it says, uh, you got to make it bigger because I can't see. Discursive practices shape and constrain identity. Then it has identities are not equal. People experience identity in inequitable ways. But when you're talking about identity, that's like getting into the different genders and stuff. So... The next bullet point is institutions and institutional practices and policies are complicit in the construction of identity, inequitable practices and policies. Now, what they're doing is they're basically going really deep into the structure of racism and finding things that would be racist in society. Again, no one is denying the fact that racism e exists. And if you are, you're crazy because racism does exist. Racism has existed throughout all of human history. Slavery has existed throughout all of human history. Now, the type of slavery, which would be chattel slavery, that started here, or it got big here in the United States. But I'm going to go in more into that in a second. But the last bullet point on the slide, Zach, that bothers me. This is what they want to teach in elementary schools and middle schools is the critique of capitalism. So they went through the whole race thing and then at the end they had the critique of capitalism, which means the whole point, which is why I don't like the critical race theory argument anyway, because it derives from communism and the communist manifesto. But now they're actually teaching that capitalism is bad and trying to teach our kids and indoctrinate our kids that, that a communist state is a good uh, is a good thing and that's not right because statistically, figuratively historically, communism is far greater than cap or capitalism, sorry, is far greater than communism there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it I don't like I don't like when they're trying they're they're taking they're taking like theories and so-called knowledge from a failed societal practice and economic system and they're trying to implement it communism and communists today in the United States are the exact definition of insanity they are literally trying to do things over and over and over and over again the exact same way it's been done in the past and every time it fails every single time it fails there is not one successful example of a communist state they all end up failing now they some get really powerful like the soviet union and then it collapses meanwhile the capitalist countries they, we have our down, you know, we had the depression, we had the recession, but we always come back. You know, we take a punch in the face, get a black eye, and it heals up. Meanwhile, communist countries take a, take a, get stabbed in the heart. What is the difference between communism and capitalism? Well, capitalism and the difference is means of production. 
is the biggest difference. Means of production is in a capitalist state, we have a free market society that de- determines demand, therefore is going to determine supply. And then you have countries that are going to find ways to uh, become very efficient in producing a good or innovative in producing a good because they want to outdo competition because we have competition in the marketplace. Competition drives innovation, which drives a growing economy. Communism takes the means of production and puts it into what they say is the um, – you know, hands of hands of the community, which would be if we, if me and you, Zach, just lived in our little community, we would we would determine the means of production. The problem is that we need someone to oversee it all. Who is that one person? That's the government. So when you take the means of production out from the private sector and you put it into the public's hands, the public. And public business is the government, which means the government controls the means of production. The people own the government. We own the government as the American people. But but people don't understand. They think that, oh, I'm going to have more control in a communist system and it's going to be more fair. It's not. Because the government already in a capitalist system is not fair. In, in, In a communist system, it's just overpowering. No one benefits. And the more socialist you go towards the more communist society, because it's a spectrum, then the worse it gets, the more power the government has over the people. It's a it's a dangerous path to go down. And if you think that the United States can't have something like this happen, you're wrong because you it can. This can this can happen in the United States. And it happens with starting to teach things like critical race theory that the, and and you and you teach the the young kids growing up because people like me and you Zach that that have already formed an opinion it's hard to change our minds. But that is why they want younger other than the physical part, but that's why a lot of times they want younger people going into the military. Why? Because they can break them down easier and they can shape them. They're easier to shape. It would be easier to shape an 18-year-old going into the military than it would a 29-year-old who's had work experience and, and experience in the economy and workforce. You know, it's harder to yell at someone like that than it is an 18-year-old and get them to do what, what you want to do. So they're going to teach theories like this critical race theory stuff and 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 basically brainwash kids and you can say oh brainwash is such a uh it's such a uh radical term but that's exactly what they're doing it is exactly what they're doing it's a form of brainwashing they start young and they're going to teach it and they're teaching literally that white people are racist all white people are racist it, i listen to the lessons that they're teaching in 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 the high schools and stuff like that that's literally what it is it's, it's terrible they show what what racism looks like and the first picture they have is a bunch of confederate flags zach and people in kkk uniforms now obviously the kkk is racist but just because someone has a confederate flag doesn't mean they're racist at all i know black people that have confederate flags So, I just, when there's not a lot of news or things to cover, I like going back to this communist discussion. Because it just, I saw the guy with Ben Shapiro yesterday that was, you know, that that was flying the uh, Lenin and uh, Stalin flag. Mm. And truly believed that Russia saved the world during World War II and that that was the way to go. And and that is a lack of of historical knowledge. Well, if you don't heed history, you're doomed to repeat it. Exactly. And this doesn't just go with white people. Right now, Africa has the most slaves in the world. Like 9.2 million people live in, in slavery in Africa right now. Um... 
a lot of those aren't just African people. It's, it's North Koreans, actually. I've learned this. North Korea will sell their citizens over to Africa to build statues for these you know, kings and queens and dictators down there in Africa. So then when, when then the, the Africans that own these North Korean slaves be racist towards North Koreans or Asians? Like where where does the where does the power structure end and where does it start? There's there's major flaws in the critical race theory argument. Major flaws. And and I just it's not good. I don't want my kids going to school and learning about how communism is a way to go and critiquing capitalism. It should be the opposite. You should learn about communism. You should learn about capitalism. But we need to teach them what is successful and not a failing system that has failed over and over and over and over and over again many times in the last hundred years. It's not even like there's a a large uh, timeline of failure here. Like it's just failed a significant amount of times in a very short period of time. It's not like it took 200 or 300 years for a society to fail here. It's like it took 40 years. And that's that's scary to me. What's up, Woody? How's it going? I think Mr. A keeps losing connection. He's he's in and out of the the chat here. But I, I that bothers me. It really does. There's there's major flaws in the argument. And I don't know, but I, that's. That's where I wanted to go down with, with the critical race theory conversation. It you have the right is is making it out like like everyone is teaching it, and that's not true. But but there are people that are teaching it, and the problem is that that I, again, like I said in the beginning, you could have one teacher that that agrees with it and, and wants to teach it, and and they're not going to stop her from doing it or him from doing it, and they should. It shouldn't be taught. But the left is going to make it seem like, oh, well, it's not a racist thing. It's not this. It's not that. It literally, like, when I'm looking at the slides they were pulling up in the in the lesson, it is all about critiquing capitalism and teaching you that only white people can be racist. That's literally what it is. That's how they have it. And the problem is that, like I said, there's significant flaws. So... That's about as deep as I'm going to go into that. We're, we'll talk more about it in the future once I do more reading on it. But um, Zach, I heard I, w- I went about as long as I've ever gone without saying a cuss word. But that was that was decent. I'm, I'm it was it right. Impression. Someone even complimented me saying good talk. Um, really? That's yeah, good. yeah. But then the next thing I'm going to say is going to blow that away though. So I so I got a comment oh, on the go. Alec Baldwin video I made yesterday, Zach. Yeah. <laughs> You know, about him not pulling the trigger. Yeah. And the guy goes, yeah, I guess he didn't stick his dick in his wife to make his kids either. <laughs> oh, good Lord. <laughs> it's good. I mean, he's right. Yeah, you legitimately just ruined everything you said. <laughs> I, I was doing so well. I had a nice professional you were, conversation. You were doing great. And we'll see everyone just drop off after that. No. Yeah. Uh, no that's it. I like, I like reviewing the comments. Again, that wasn't my comment. I wish it was. Um. Because that's a good perspective. He's right. You had to do that. You know, and it goes back to the science of things, too. I Think about this. You could argue, did the, did the chicken come before the egg? Right? Like, that's a... You could go back and forth. And people could literally, you know, come up with, with their theories about all that all day long. But what you can't argue, okay, is after... The chicken and the egg are created. What is the process thereafter? The egg has to come out of the chicken, right? And it has to be fertilized some kind of way. So the theory ends at the beginning of that argument, but after that, it's 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 over with. It's a and it's an exact science after that. And when you talk about reproduction, it's it's an exact science after that. There is one way to do it. There's only one way to do it. 
do you have any arguments against that, against that, Zach? Any anyone in the room or anyone that's going to comment? Are they going to disagree with that? I'm not even close. <laughs> I would love someone to come on here and argue that I'm wrong. If there's another way to reproduce, I would love to know about it. I would be very interested seeing. For humans to reproduce, because I'm not talking about all the crazy little animals in the sea. Um, like if Pete Buttigieg was able to have his child, which we know he didn't, but if he was, how did that happen? Because I know that I'd probably shoot myself if I was pregnant as a man. Because <laughs> it would not be a very <laughs> comfortable way to have a baby. Um not that having one is comfortable to begin with, but it doesn't work. But people in society today will actually argue against things that are specific sciences. But then those same people are going to get mad at you when you argue against other things like the vaccine. That's not an exact science. In fact, it's a very new science. Or, or you're going to argue certain statistics because you get statistics from different sources and they're all contradicting. The best one is right now we're pushing this Roe v. Wade. Everyone's talking about this Roe v. Wade uh, argument with abortion. And they're saying, you know, like the left wants to be able to abort babies up to hell, the time they're born. But the left doesn't want to define what a life is. But think about this, Zach. If you can abort a baby up to nine months, then you're saying that that baby is not a, a being, Right. But then why, when you shoot a pregnant woman and kill the baby and the woman, are you being tried for two murders? Mind blown. And then uh, you, you ain't got to convince me on that one either. <clears throat> and then why, if, if you can abort a baby up until nine weeks, or months, sorry, um... And it's my body, my choice. And why are you forcing me to take a vaccine that's not impacting anyone else? Hmm. The problem is, if you're going to have an argument or a, if you're going to have a um, opinion, make sure that it doesn't vary all that much from issue to issue. Not that every issue is the same, but when it comes to health, something like that, my body, my choice, then it should be, I feel like that's pretty much the same thing. Although, I guess not, because you could argue, well, Michael, you think that everyone should be able to have the choice to take a vaccine, but you don't agree with abortion. So I guess it goes both ways on that. But See, the problem that's is... Where I guess I di- that's where I guess I differ with you, because it's that, that whole my body, my choice thing, I agree with. And, you know, when it comes to abortions and such and all that... Um, the, the gray area for me is, you know, you have certain types of situations where... Yes, I agree. You no, know, that it... And I hate to say... Incest, it, but, rape, know, it, problems with the child. Things things of that nature. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm all for that. I'm talking about where so, you fucked up and the condom broke. Yeah, well... You know, and mistakes happen. Unfortunately, they do, but, but I don't see that as... And that's just my opinion. You don't have to agree with it. Yeah. I don't see that as being something that people should get all mad at each other over. Whether you're pro-life or pro-choice, uh, you know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. Or pro-choice. Like, But it is a topic, and I just feel like, like unless there's something wrong with the child, or there's something, you know, like they were raped or, or incest or something like that, then, then okay. But I just just to have an abortion, have an abortion because you didn't want to use use a contraceptive. No, I don't agree with that. I, I don't, and you know. But what like and the other thing is too is that right now you never hear the left. Louder, uh, Stephen Crowder. I like listening to his show. He's funny as shit. But he made a good argument saying that that the left never defines what a life is. 
and and that's a problem because to me a life is you know i agree with him it was anything at at when at uh fertilization point of conception yeah i mean it's it's growing it's a being it's going to turn into a life right and if it has a heartbeat it damn sure is a life yeah if it's feeding if you're feeding it it's a separate being because like think about it i mean we are literally we will charge someone for murder for two people if they shoot someone that's pregnant and it it just we need some what's the word some uh consistency across the board And I, I didn't mean to go into the abortion thing because I know it's a sensitive topic, but the Alec Baldwin thing with the firearms also plays into this argument because you have some people are literally willing to go against the science of how a firearm works. And, they're, and, and, and so much so that in the Kyle Rittenhouse case and in the... Uh, trial with Alec Baldwin, you have attorneys that are willing to argue in the court of law that it was the firearm's fault. And and I don't get that. Because there's literally a science. You have to pull the trigger. You had to load the gun. You had to load the gun. With, you had to point the gun in the direction of the people you shot because bullets don't curve. They don't make 90 degree turns. I think they tried that on um what was that show Mythbusters once? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it worked movie, or not. I think it's called Wanted. But uh did it work? Um not in not in the fashion that people thought it would. It was very It wasn't deadly, I, right? Or it wasn't accurate. N- well, no, it just like I mean it like kind of worked, but it didn't work at the same time. It came out spinning and stuff, didn't it? Like not what they thought it wasn't a good shot the point is is that alec baldwin didn't have a 90 degree shooting weapon okay he had to point the gun at someone he had to pull the trigger he had to cock the hammer i demonstrated this yesterday it's a simple science the same people that want you to trust the science trust the science they want to deny the literal physical science of everything else when it goes against their agenda there's no consistency if you want me to listen to you on climate change, you want me to listen to you about these gender things you have going on, you want me to listen to you about you know, COVID, then you also need to have the same opinion on the correct science of the ballistics of a firearm and how it happens. I think that's all I'm asking. And it, and it goes both ways. The right needs to do the same thing too. There just needs to be consistency. If you're going to speculate, that's fine. But don't force me to trust the science or get on me because I'm speculating the science, especially new science. And you don't want to trust the science of a firearm, something that has literally been in a, a perfected science on how to make guns go bang for the last thousand years. Or however long, you know, since the Chinese created gunpowder. <laughs> So that's where I'm getting at with this. Like, I guarantee you Alec Baldwin wants to uh, wants you to go get a vaccination. He probably pushes vaccines. But he doesn't want to admit that it took him cocking the hammer and pulling the trigger and pointing the gun at someone to shoot two people with one bullet. So you want me to go get a vaccine, Baldwin? You want me to trust the science, but you don't want to trust the science of, of, of physics. For every action, there's a reaction. And the action in your circumstance is pulling the damn trigger. And you say no. But I could argue the fact that if I get vaccinated, I'm still going to get COVID. LeBron James is a great example that just got COVID. And he's vaccinated. It doesn't take, it's not an if then that, then that situation with the COVID vaccine, but it is a if then that situation with a firearm. You don't pull a trigger, gun doesn't go off. 
if you get vaccinated, you still get COVID. You can still spread COVID. And climate change is a whole different science. Climate change is, is, we just know that climate is changing. It could go either way, so we're just going to call it climate change. Go up or down. It's like making a stock market prediction. That's how much of a joke that is to me. It's, when I hear climate change, I'm not going to deny that there is climate change. And maybe people are doing things that, that are affecting it. Yes. But I've made this argument. We can't predict the weather a day in advance accurately. But, but and, and it went from being global warming to climate change because they realized, oh, shit, we don't know where what's going to happen. But we need to make a new economy around, you know, the climate and EV vehicles and all that stuff. Think about this. If they really wanted us to drive EV vehicles, why aren't they inviting Tesla, the one company that has perfected the EV vehicle and has the technology, why haven't they invited them to the White House and why aren't they going to subsidize Tesla? Why are they more worried about taxing Elon Musk instead of working with him and growing the EV market and maybe trying to get him to release some of this technology to other companies like Ford and, and GM and all that to, to perfect their EV vehicle market and create more competition. Why aren't they doing that? Why? Because Tesla and, and they don't like Elon Musk's agenda. He's too unpredictable. He does whatever the hell Elon Musk wants to do. So he's not a part of it. If it was such a, a vital um, topic... And, and if we were going to die in the next 50 years, then why isn't it a mandatory thing that we do all this stuff? If the earth was going to freaking end in 50, 50 years from climate change, wouldn't you say they'd be taking it way more seriously than what they were? Like, we're talking about military orders. We're talking about everything. No, instead, they're just coming up with ways to make more profit. And I'm a capitalist, but don't lie to us. Don't just create some bullshit um message don't have your spokesperson as a 17 year old girl that knows nothing that just feels strongly about something hell i feel strongly about a lot of things but i'm not a good spokesperson for stuff <laughs> no no you're not no nope. you know i'm i'm just as passionate about football as she's climate change but i'm not a good spokesperson for football uh if it was up to me, we would have our commentators cussing and, and saying, oh, man, he just tore him up out there on the field and making it Definitely funny. Get and get rid of all these. Uh, like the Joe Buck, he would be out? fired. What did, What is the new rules they came out with this year? The targeting or... rules would be gone. No, oh, not that one. I mean, I agree with you, but not that one. Um, oh, my gosh. Like the celebrating rule or whatever. Oh, yes, that would be gone, um, especially in the NFL. I would eliminate you know, that. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, you can't taunt and you can't celebrate. Yeah, that would be out. Yes. I can't stand that. They're professionals. Let them do what they want. It's it they want to provide a good product and entertainment, but they want to not let the guy they want to like constrain the guys. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying we need fights out on the field, but let them talk shit. That's the difference between well, American sports them... and, and and other sports too. Like Brit was all her perspective like sports like, oh, you know, like especially the English stuff, oh, it's a gentleman's game, you know, like like in tennis when they when they hit the ball back and it hits the net and goes over and they get a point, they'll say sorry to the other person. Whereas I'm like, I, damn, how can I do that every time? Why would you say sorry? They just do. It's just like, oh, my bad kind of deal. Like because they, they weren't able to, you know, replay the ball. They weren't able to have an opportunity to play the ball. And I'm like, isn't that the whole fucking purpose? Well, I was about to say, what, then what's the purpose of... Never mind. But but <laughs> but you see, so like I feel like the difference with Americans is we're looking at well, how can we do that every single time? Mm-hmm. What what uh, what technique can I come up with to try and get that ball as close to that net, the top of that net, and be able to bounce that over? Mm. So, and and I think that uh, she was telling me like when they when they serve and they have a fault, I think it's called, and you have a double fault, the men. Mm-hmm actually were doing that they were hitting the top of the net and it's going over so they had to take it out like saying no you guys can't do that anymore which is fine i get that because they they were so good at it. but as far as like 
you know, when they're in a volley, hitting it back and forth, and you hit the net yeah. and it goes over, why are you going to say you're sorry for getting a point? The whole point is to win. Yeah. Um. But American sports is it's it's that shit talking. It's that that gritty kind of sport. And I I love that. It's entertainment as a fan. It makes you want to watch it, but it also makes the game more fun when you're playing. It's more competitive. Right. And when you make – football is not meant to be a gentleman's game. It's not. Nope. And, and you know, that's why I've kind of lost my interest with baseball these past few few years. You know, after I see, you know, them criticizing a guy because he hit a – you know, the team's up by seven and he hit, goes up and hits a grand slam on a, on a 3-0 count. Mm-hmm. I'm like, damn, dude, good for you. That was the pitcher's dumbass fault for throwing a strike down the middle. Yeah. Where everyone else is like, oh, no, that's an unwritten rule. You don't do that. That's not respectful. Fuck that. <sighs> Respect. Don't throw at the pitch. Walk them. Oh, my gosh. I mean, intentionally walk them. There's a lot of options you can do when you're down 7 nothing. And you know what's crazy, Zach? Is that good thing he actually did that because the, the team, the next in the bottom of the – Ninth inning actually came back and would have tied the game if he didn't have if he w- didn't have done that didn't have done that really yes um, but it's happened a couple times but baseball you know they have these unwritten rules they have um, all these unwritten things and I, I just can't stand it just let the guys play there are things that you need to have rules on but you know calling it targeting when the guy hits someone with the crown of his helmet. And it was because the guy was like falling over and he's looking down at the ground. Like, that's stupid. Like, but we're going to kick a kid out of the game for that or fine. I'm like, no, just let him play. You're going to have more injuries by making guys slow up and be, and be more cautious than you are allowing them to fly around full speed. Agreed with that one for sure. Cause uh, dude, I can't even, there's no way to, to teach proper tackling without like leading with your helmet. Well, no, uh, you don't lead with your helmet. That you don't shoulder. drop your head. I know that. I you know hit with your you legs. With your you shoulder. keep your head up. But the, the the problem is that there's a lot of scenarios that that like the running back is falling on the ground. He's tripping, right? And mm-hmm. you go to hit him, and he's falling in front of you, and your eyes are following the running back as he's falling. So what your eyes go down, your head's going down. All of a sudden, you just un- intentionally make helmet to helmet contact. It's just as much the running back's fault as it is the, the guy that's tackling him's fault. So it's not, look, you don't hit with your head. There's, there's ways to keep proper tackling. You never, ever hit with your head, but sometimes it just happens. But now we're in, a, you know, in college football. They ki- literally kick you out when it wasn't even intentional. It's like some of these, it's like, ah, you know, I get it's helmet to helmet, but he didn't mean to do that. And then running backs are allowed to run and put their head down or, or against Florida. Uh, Florida and Alabama was the best example of this act. The guy reaches out and grabs the defender's face mask on a stiff arm. Grabs it. Not even just puts his hand out to, to hit it. He grabs it and doesn't get called. Mm. So it doesn't go both ways. It's like the liberal left logic of, of football. You know, <laughs> we're going to trust this science but deny the actual exact science. It's like we're going to, we're going to, you know, penalize the gray area but when a guy actually commits a fraud you know an open penalty we're going to deny that you know and and man some of these moves with college football what do you say hashtag logic said hashtag logic yeah but you know some of these moves with college football is that you know my dad has been absolutely pissed about brian kelly leaving notre dame (laughs) (laughs) absolutely i figured he would be um which I, I agree. The way he did it, they have a chance to make the playoffs still. And he just leaves. Not, not anymore. Yeah, well, they still do. You have two no, teams. I, if, if Cincinnati loses to Houston and Alabama loses to Georgia, Notre Dame's in. Right, but with Brian Kelly leaving, they, they said that uh, Notre Dame can no longer That's bullshit. Go. I hate that. Why? Because I'm, the next I, guy, the guy they just hired or or are going to hire Marcus Freeman is is if not as good as a coach of Brian Kelly. The kids love him, and it's not changing anything. They may do better. You don't know. Like that's the thing is is the college football playoff playoff committee is is full of so much shit in my opinion, because they they make it like they can predict the future and they can't. They don't know how Notre Dame's going to be without Brian Kelly. No one does. 
You don't know what's going to happen in the future. They could have a chip on their shoulder and go out and just whoop everyone's ass. They could. They have a lot of talent. Maybe Brian yeah. Kelly was what was holding him back. Hmm. There's a lot of times that that happens where the, where the the coach that comes in to replace the head coach ends up being better. So I don't think a team should be penalized for that. I don't. A, a good example, um, when Ohio State won the last national championship, they had their third-string quarterback in, Cardinal Jones. You know, what? if you penalize them that because the first two quarterbacks got hurt, they would have never won a national championship, but they were by far the better, the best team that year. Mm. And the third-string quarterback ended up being better than the other two. So I, I don't like that argument. And, and these coaches just picking up and leaving, you know, I get – I'm not against necessarily Brian Kelly leaving, but the way he did it. He just left. Why not wait? Why not tell LSU, hey, I'm interested, but we're going to wait and see how this playoff – deal works out because I want to be there and coach and potentially win a national championship. I don't want to I don't want to hurt the 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 players' chances of, of competing for a national championship. That would have been the proper way to do that. Agreed. But he just picked him in left. I think well I think he was also just kind of looking at the money aspect of it. I don't think he really cared. And I don't think he'll I I mean I don't think it'll be any different. I think he was doing a good job at Notre Dame and I don't think he's gonna be able to do it at LSU. I think it, it takes a certain kind of person because you have to be able to recruit. And, you know, it's, it's, I'm trying to think of how to word this, but Brian Kelly is a Midwest guy. Mm. And a lot of the people he recruits are not the same kind of athlete that they recruit at LSU. You know, and, and I just, I don't know. I don't think it's going to work out for him like he thinks. It may. It may. First of all, he's no Nick Saban. And he's got to compete against Florida's new coach. He's got to compete against Lane Kiffin. He's got to compete against Jimbo Fisher and Nick Saban every well, single year. He's – he's, and again, I know what your response to this is going to be, but he's stepping into real football. <laughs> well, it's all real fo- – okay. We need to lay something down. And this is not a popular belief, especially here in the South, but – First of all, I want to say this. I'm a Florida guy, but I am not an SEC guy. I could care less. If Florida's not winning, I don't care if any other team in the SEC wins or in wins the national championship for that matter. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I have my team. That and MTSU. Florida and MTSU and, and Notre Dame, because I do like Notre Dame, are the only teams I really care that win. Cincinnati, I would love to see Cincinnati go win a national championship because they have a chance. That's who I would be rooting for this year in the playoffs. The SEC's bottom half, Zach, or or what teams in the SEC have consistently been good throughout their their entire history? Answer that. I can't make a comment on that one. Only Alabama. LSU was nothing before Nick Saban. They were terrible. I watch highlights of Florida whooping LSU's ass every year, year in and year out, before Nick Saban got there. Mm. And they still haven't been consistent. They, you know, they're good, and they for a couple of years, and they fall off, right? Then they may have a good team, then they fall off. People like making like like LSU is this this crazy great team, and they can be. They have a lot of talent, but they're not Alabama. Okay, and. And Alabama has had their bad years too, but Alabama throughout history and Notre Dame throughout history has been good. Michigan has been consistent. There's only a few teams. Ohio State has been consistent, but there's really only a few teams throughout their entire history that have been good. Clemson was not that great until they um, Dabo Sweeney got there. You know, they had some good years, but, but consistently not until Dabo Sweeney got there. So just like the University of Miami used to be the best team from the 80s to the early 2000s. Them, Florida State, and then Florida every once in a while in there. And then you have some other teams. But but Notre Dame and Alabama and, um, you know, you could throw in very few other teams, maybe in Oklahoma. Those are really the only teams that consistently throughout their history have been great. 
But the, but when you get right now, you have Alabama and Georgia. But Georgia's only won one national championship or two national championships, maybe. I think it's only one. So outside of Alabama, you have Florida that's won three, but they have very bad years. Um, outside of Alabama, who is there? Georgia's a good team this year. After Alabama and Georgia this year and Ole Miss and Texas A&M, after that, everyone falls off significantly. They're no better than any other conference. And right now you could argue the Big Ten has Michigan and Ohio State and then Michigan State and maybe in Iowa. You know, like, like people want to make it like the SEC is dominant. They are. They are the best conference, but... <sighs> You know, and it is a tough conference to play in, but the problem is that there is a significant drop off in 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 value after the, the top four teams, as there is in any other conference. So, not every team in the SEC is the end all be all. In fact, Vanderbilt and Tennessee has been terrible lately. Now they're decent this year, but Florida is absolutely terrible this year. They're not that great. They would go and get beat by teams outside. Florida almost got beat by one double A school. So, you know, I, I find flaws in the SEC argument as well. Mm. But I'm not going to deny the fact that they are the better conference. You know, and I, and I hate the fact that Oklahoma and Texas are going to the SEC because I think that takes away you're, – now you're creating a power conference and you're um, taking away – Yeah, but, but Texas and Oklahoma aren't going to be able to hold their own with majority of the teams in the SEC. Why do you say that? Because they just don't. It's not the same kind of football. It will be. It will become that. And and Oklahoma has been in the mm. playoffs however many times lately. Oklahoma just beat the shit out of Florida last year. A good Florida team last year in the bowl game. Beat the shit out of them. And both Why? of them were, were deprived the... of talent. Because they had Kyle Trash or Trask? No, or Trask didn't play. Or he played a little bit, but he was the only one. Kyle Pitts and all them didn't play. They opted out. But Oklahoma had a lot of people that sat out too. Mm. So, um, uh, you know, there's uh, – the other thing is too when they talk about the group of five schools, Zach, most of the time when a group of five school goes and plays an SEC team in a bowl game, they either barely mm-hmm. lose or beat the hell out of the SEC team. It's mm-hmm. never the other way around. There's many examples of SEC teams, including Alabama, going and getting beat by a group of five school. <coughs> or, or an out-of-conference uh, school in bowl games. So, you know, that's, that's kind of my argument to that. But we're at the, uh, we're at the hour mark, so we'll, we'll go ahead and end it. I ran it today about random things. There wasn't a lot of news today, so um, we'll end it there. And uh, we're not going to do tomorrow. Probably back on Sunday or Monday. Probably Monday. So, uh, yeah. Zach, you got anything? <coughs> no, I'm good. Just uh, excuse me for sneezing so much. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and close this out. Don't forget, go check out the Facebook page. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And we'll see you next week.